kingdom established by God himself. However, all is not lost. There is still hope. And sooner or later, the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. Apart from this kingdom, our Lord Jesus Christ, apart from this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other kingdom. And it is the kingdom which Adam, Abram, Enoch, Moses, Jesus, and Christ who are waiting for. In it are found living fountains of water, everlasting life, peace, joy, and other attributes. All the people who were killed, burnt at stake, imprisoned, and persecuted suffered because of this kingdom. Paul, John the Baptist, Peter, and the apostles were killed because of this kingdom. You will realize that had God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit had not come, it would have been very difficult to establish this kingdom. Think of a person who lives with others but is never angry with any person. People will be jealous of his life that they either break into his house and plunder his property and finally drive him out or kill him in cold blood. He will pack out from the house as the scripture demands. Sometimes you are singing along the street and somebody somewhere throws a stone at you. Whereas you have not disturbed him in any way. You will be tempted to make trouble with him. Also, as that is the condition of the kingdom of the world. But since our Lord Jesus Christ has said that this generation will not pass away until everything is made manifest, these words are now manifested in the world. Only righteousness dwells in this kingdom. The commission of any of the vices like theft, falsehood, fornication, adultery, drinking is not profitable to any person in this kingdom. It does not serve any useful purpose for any person to steal or prostitute about or indulge in the preparation of concoction. It is rather profitable for one to show the expression of love, to be truthful, patient, merciful, humble, meek and peaceful. These requirements are beneficial to any man. That was why St. Paul said we are pushed down and yet we are not wounded because he realized that he was marching towards the kingdom and so he did not retaliate paying back evil for evil. Recollect also the circumstances under which Peter and the other apostles were killed. No person petitioned against such murderous acts. Think of how a full-fledged man with blood in his veins allowed his head to be severed from the body without doing anything and no person protects against it or tries to prevent it. These situations occurred in order to reveal this kingdom of God. In spite of what people must have done to you, you should not quarrel or fight or sigh or become fastidious. For you have been taught to be loving and peaceful. Brethren, this is a very good opportunity for you because there is no other thing left to be revealed unto you about the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom does not consist in wealth, but in God's virtue. You have witnessed the various scientific inventions, like the aeroplane flying in the air, the electricity, the radio and television, money, the locomotive engine, the motor car, and ocean steamships. Many people are highly educated, and many of them glory in existing in these inventions being the kingdoms of the world. But what about the kingdom of God? A great many of you have gone to America, Britain, India, Russia, Germany, and had been and had seen 
the many magnificent buildings, but did you find any place referred to as the kingdom of God? While there, you knew great multimillionaires, professors, and other great men who own magnificently erected houses, some lined with gold, and all streets and lanes lit with street lights. But did you but did you find residing with them the kingdom of God? Did you find peace and truth and mercy and humility and righteousness and meekness and eternal life? If you are looking for people who possess the virtues of love, peace, mercy, humility, righteousness and truth, where can you find such persons? The kingdom is the city of righteousness. This kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is the city of truth, of peace, love, humility, and of joy. You can realize that this is not the kingdom of the world. This accounts for the reason that from January 1st to December 31st every year, I continue to teach and enjoin you not to steal, fornicate, tell lies, indulge in the preparations of concoction, not to be exasperated and fastidious, not to murmur, because such vices are not admitted in this kingdom. The glorification of the kingdom of God. You are now testifying that brotherhood has reached Britain, America, India, Western Europe. I am not interested in your roving the universe because Satan had already pitched his tent in all the countries of the world. I am rather interested in the glorification of the kingdom of God. In the same token, I am not interested in your claim that there is much money in brotherhood or that battles are, are furnished or that charms and and that charms are extracted from people's body or that the dead is raised the blind are made to receive their sight but my interest is in the projection of this kingdom of god you testify that that the choir sings melodiously and dances dexterously and members of the battle put on immaculate Sultans, I am not interested in the whiteness of your sultans or your songs and dances, but once the kingdom is manifested, nothing else can be seen except love, gladness, peace, joy, righteousness, truth, and mercy. When you have all these attributes, you do not need to see any other thing. You testify that there are many promi prominent persons in brotherhood. I do not seem, I do not seem to get any prominent person here. What is prominent is this love, peace, truth, mercy, joy, righteousness, and any person who possesses these attributes, he is prominent in the kingdom. Our second lesson will now be read. Second lesson, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine. Second lesson, John chapter 16, verse 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Brethren, you have heard the lesson read. The Father wishes to reveal the kingdom of God to you, the kingdom which our Lord Jesus Christ died and shed his precious blood for the redemption of the world, the kingdom you have heard so much about. We have no connection with the kingdom of the world, whether they are beautiful or peacefully administered, but we are interested in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you find somebody testifying that he fought with one who spoke evil about brotherhood, such, such is applied 
in the kingdom of the world. But in the kingdom of God, no person fights. If you complain that you are angry with somebody because he encroached upon a piece of land belonging to brotherhood, that cannot be true because brotherhood has nothing to do with anger and it is not interested in the acquisition of land. It does not serve any useful purpose for one to struggle for land because the psalmist has said that heaven and earth and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein belong to God. If you understand this fact, what then will you struggle for because he owns everything? He created man and other things and arranged everything in its ship shape order. Now is the time for him to reveal the glory of his kingdom. You have not started your joy because you will be so joyful that you will neither hunger nor thirst. You will sin until you forget yourself and dance until your legs will be lifted up from the ground because of the great joy in the kingdom of Christ. We, therefore, have to be very watchful because when the Pharisees asked our Lord Jesus Christ when the kingdom of God would come, he told them, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The Satan will brainwash people that it is God who kills and tortures and punishes people and that all adverse situations besetting man can be attributable to our Lord Jesus Christ. But can you not notice how the kingdom of God has revealed love, peace, mercy, joy and other virtues? The Comforter comes. Our Lord Jesus Christ testified about this age when he said, When the Comforter comes, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit has come to preach, heal the sick, or raise the dead. He has come to reveal the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and the glory of God and make it manifest to all the inhabitants of the world. That is why in this kingdom no person is required to be annoyed, to quarrel, and to abuse and curse. Neither is anyone required to cause any confusion. If you are a confusionist, then you should go where there is trouble because there is no place for confusionists in this kingdom. If there is quarreling amongst the choristers, then they are in the kingdom of the world. If there is quarreling and fighting amongst the elders, they are in the kingdom of the world. If the ordained ones are led by the spirit of error and anger, then they are in the kingdom of the world. In this kingdom of Christ revealed unto you, attributes found are those of love, joy, righteousness and meekness. People are differently made. In this kingdom, you do not invite your friend because you like a pathway through which many people pass. You can have a child and God opens his own way for him and maybe he is not a child of this kingdom. You can go your way and he takes to his own way. You may likewise have a father who treads another path since he is not a child of this kingdom. The purpose of this kingdom is to save the whole world. But this does not imply that you should do service to your father as you ought to do. But since he has no ability to serve God in his vineyard, 
you are duty bound to serve and assist him. Wherever the carcass is, there the eagles gather. People are looking for you everywhere because you are the salt of the earth and no person can prepare delicious food without adding salt to it. That is why where, wherever the children of God possess with love, peace, mercy, truth, meekness and lowliness in, of heart are found also evil men, thieves, robbers and liars will fill such a place in order to share in the blessing. Is there any person in this world who does not desire to have love, truth, mercy, peace and all good virtue? The only problem here, the, all, the local adage says that a dried dog meat is very delicious. But what will the person eat until, the, until he completely dries his dog meat? It is expedient to possess love, truth, patience and humility. But how can you possess it now that you are pregnant and saturated with all sorts of sin? That is why you should not be angry when you find people loitering or hanging, or hanging around the fence. Such people are worldly because they have no ability to enter into the kingdom to receive the words of life being delivered there. The inability, their inability to enter into the kingdom is their own lookout. They may beget children but have no love. They may also have money but no peace. They can possess worldly wisdom but lack patience, humility, mercy, truth and meekness. If you live without these virtues, what type of life are you living? I want you to watch and see what will become of the kingdom of God. The worldly people will look for you. The angels will look for you. Murderers will come and prostrate before you and ask you to speak that he might hear. But I say they will not hear because they are already saturated with the attributes of the kingdom of the world. Brethren, I want you to realize that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It is not attainment of book knowledge nor putting on good dresses. It is not money or wealth but of our Lord Jesus Christ and consists of love, peace, joy, patience, righteousness, humility, meekness, honesty, mercy, lowliness of the heart and self-control. Except you are born again, you cannot serve God. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ told Nicodemus that he must be born again because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked him, How can a man be born again when he is already old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And our Lord Jesus Christ asked him, as a great teacher in Israel, do you not know what this statement means? He told Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In the same token, except a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot have love, he cannot have truth, mercy, patience, and humility. It therefore means that if you lack these attributes, you cannot enter. People have attempted to travel to the sun and the moon. They have invented many things, but possesses no love, patience, mercy, truth, or humility. The worldly people glory in the number of children they have. 
the kingship position, wealth, but the children of God glory and boast in love, in peace, joy, humility, patience, meekness, self-control and temperance. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ has exhorted that we should not labor for the meat that perishes, but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto us. For him had God the Father sealed. Many mansions. Whatever you do cannot gain recognition except with patience, love, humility, truth, righteousness, and all the virtues of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ had said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye who believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that wherever I am, you may be there also. Where is he? He is in love, in truth, in peace, he is in mercy, in patience, in meekness, he is in humility, in righteousness and temperance. Whoever professes to be a child of God but lack these qualities he is deceiving himself you can only enter when you comply you have been advised to forsake sin but who has accepted to forsake sin no person is suspended here it's are dismissed you can do nothing if you are not sent even though you know that the good you have failed to do is sinful one thing is sure and that is unless you comply yourself with the instructions of god and walk according to the path of rectitude you cannot enter into the kingdom of our lord jesus christ the people of the world are aware that in the kingdom there is no quarreling, no fighting, no exasperation, no punishment. And so they come in with their glories into it. What is the glory of the world? It is theft. It is falsehood. It is fornication. It is deceit and swindling but the glory of god consists in love in truth in patience humility in meekness in righteousness in temperance and in joy that explains many people that explains why many people complain that the conditions in brotherhood are not understood by them they should know that brotherhood is not meant to be understood by them. God himself understood, understands it. It is not known as the kingdom of this world. That should be clear to people. It is called the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ and should not be understood by anybody. Do you remember that a great many people follow our Lord Jesus Christ but when he told them that whosoever does not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood is not fit to be my disciple and will have no, no life in him, neither will he be allowed to enter into the kingdom of God. But the people contended that the injunction was so difficult to be complied with by them and so they backslided and withdrew from him. The scripture has attested to the fact that the day shall not come except there be except there come falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. 
causes of backsliding. You will notice that somebody who was up and doing in brotherhood has now backslided. Do not ask why he has backslided. For the father knows why he cannot come in again. Sometimes somebody swears on an oath that he will not come into brotherhood even, even if he dies and you will think that it is because of his multitude of sin. But I tell you, that is not true. The father knows why he cannot be a brotherhood. Sometimes a person comes to request that you take him to brotherhood and you begin to thank God because he had made it possible for a prominent person in the society to come into brotherhood. You do not know why. Only the father knows why he has now made up his mind to come. All the things we have seen and all the occurrences every day are known by the father. If any person does not come into brotherhood, it bothers not God in any way. If any person decides to come into brotherhood, it will not cause God no concern. If any person withdraws from brotherhood, it does not disturb God at all. Brethren, notice that the highest condition to be found in this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is love. Kingdom does not need mundane things. If you have love, it is no concern to God. If you do not possess love, God is not bothered about it either. The only thing is that the Father is very envious about you that you should enter into the kingdom of God to observe how the kingdom looks, looks like. How peaceful, how sweet, how good and how perfect. It is meet that man should enter therein this kingdom is a place where there is no anger, there is no troubled mind, where there is no lack of patience, no quarreling, no falsehood, no pride, no arrogance, and no pomposity. In the kingdom, the services of soldiers and police are not required. Messengers and other officers are not required also but it is the glory which forms the system of government in the kingdom also children mother brother and sister and money are not needed once you seek to project this glory of god and his christ that is finality children parents brothers and sisters Friends and relations are subsidiary matter. Forsake all and follow Christ. Did our Lord Jesus Christ not teach you that if any man come to me and ate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters and his life also he cannot be my disciple? And as St. Paul not said, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ my Lord. And what things were gains to me, those I counted loss for Christ. If the kingdom of God were to consist of children, why did our Lord Jesus Christ not marry to beget children? And why did John the Baptist and St. Paul not marry to beget children? You have been taught to the point of saturation, but today you have the nearest opportunity and the single good luck that I am now revealing this kingdom to you. The scriptures say to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The kingdom is supreme. The moment you find yourself possessing the virtues of God, which are love, truth, patience, humility, meekness, righteousness, temperance, 
you are perfect. Of what use will wife, husband, children, money, houses can be to you? You should be satisfied with the attributes. Observe what is obtaining in the world where people have got motor cars, erected story buildings, have prominent children, have money, and become chiefs, but they have no peace. They are wandering about with their children, shouting that they are going to die and that they should be assisted to overcome their difficulties as they are on the brink of perishing. Look at a man with a lot of money, possessing a string of degrees, a number of children, and will voluntarily surrender his degrees, his money and children in exchange for peace and tranquility. Breadwin, I do not want to take you much longer, and God will spare your lives till you see these things manifested with million, when millionaires and professors, scientists, doctors will run into this kingdom looking for peace. You are true witnesses to the fact that if you backslide from this kingdom for a period of one week, your house will be under fire. You will be so disturbed. You will spend sleepless nights and you will be gripped with fear, running from pillar to post for a lack of peace. That is why we are looking for an expensive land to establish our own city. As many of you are, as many of you are running away from your story buildings because you have no peace. You cannot sleep there and you are not comfortable. So you rather go to the Bethel to sleep even on the bare floor where peace abounds. The city of peace and joy. Anytime you are here, you are in heaven. But when you go back to your home, you are in hell because your children will engage themselves in fighting and quarreling, some complaining of, of, of hunger, others complaining of non-payment of school fees, others will be throwing stones at you and you will regret going to your house. At the place of your work, the same thing happens and others are finding fault with you and you will regret having taken up the employment. Queries, queries will be issued to you when you commit even the slightest offense. You are never at peace with any person, being always at daggers drawn. In this kingdom, there is no trouble, no confusion, no commotion, insurrection, because peace and joy abound. Our golden text will now be read as you place your high premium on money so we place high premium on truth peace money joy patience righteousness meekness and self-control the golden text then john chapter 18 verse 36 jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Manifestation of the kingdom of the Christ. Brethren, hear what is read unto you. Can you hear why we do not quarrel or fight in brotherhood? Because we are neither pugnacious nor combative, and because brotherhood is not quarrelsome. Why we do not tell lies is because brotherhood is not made of lies. We do not even sue at law courts because our kingdom is not based on law. Whatever you do in this kingdom does not concern any person. For this reason, people argue that brotherhood has no wisdom and experience because offenders are not sued at court. 
they contend that any person who offends should be taken to court immediately. That cannot be done here because our kingdom is not that of pugnacity and quarreling or theft. It is the kingdom of God. Some people console themselves when they say upon all what you have con uh, upon all what you have committed no person is angry this is not the kingdom of exasperation and so no matter what you do you cannot induce any person to be angry when our lord jesus christ was buffeted at he did not retaliate he was called a thief a murderer a demented fellow he was not angry because his kingdom consists in joy, peace, righteousness, truth, humility, gladness, love, and self-control. And now is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ being made manifest. In the past, a great many people argued that they could not understand our Lord Jesus Christ because he spoke in parables. These parables are now being revealed to you except the father invites you you cannot come to him the kingdom of the world has suffered violence do you not notice how you struggle for chieftaincy position in government in politics for food for seats you struggle to pray to read the bible in the kingdom of the world you struggle for everything but in the kingdom of our lord jesus christ there is no struggling for anything if the father does not invite any person he cannot come and if he does not change you there is nothing you can do to change yourself no person therefore has to change yourself no person therefore has any boast of himself you have to remain quietly your suggestions and opinions on certain issues are not welcome because it is the father who does everything whatever condition you find in the kingdom apply yourself accordingly there is no need questioning somebody why he has not repented what is your concern over his repentance your concern is for you to love to be humble and be patient to be righteous and meek truthful and do all what is good justification by one man's righteousness why do you go to a person and ask him why he has been baptized into brotherhood what is your business what connection has his baptism or non-baptism with showing the expression of the virtue of love, of truth, patience, faith and humility? As by one man's offense, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men and justification of life the kingdom of Jehovah god and his christ has brought to the entire mankind peace love patience mercy and truth not to mankind only but also to the birds in the air fishes in the water animals in the bush fishes animals in the bush fishes in the water trees in the bush and all creeping things this is so because he does not quarrel with any animal he does not kill a fowl or a goat or sheep he does not eat the flesh of any animal does not whip and does nothing harmful to any of the creations of god he does not hate any person and does not resist an evil doer nor does he impute sin on any person this is why everybody and everything like him righteousness alone 
exalts a nation. Imagine how you will be able to get such a person in each of the villages. How that village will be? Think of how lucky you can have one person possessed with the virtue of love, of truth, of patience, of humility, of righteousness, of temperance, of peace and joy, of meekness and of lowliness of heart. A person who does not curse or abuse, who is never exasperated, who does not begrudge others, but peaceable with all joyous, loving, truthful, patient, humble, meek and honest. If there is a multiplicity of such a virtuously disposed person, their combined efforts will bring peace to the entire world. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Abide in my love, even as I abide in the Father's love, because without me you cannot do any good thing. If therefore we possess these attributes of God, we will be worthy to be admitted in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and, is, and this worthiness will be extended to all parts of the world. Children of Truth Truth is something which cannot change, and that is why you are referred to as the children of truth. Because God is the truth, and since you are the children of God, you are truthful. They have to be truthful till eternity, no matter the circumstances. They have to love one another throughout the days of their lives.